I uh, would like to provide the board with updates about um, the, the items listed on the agenda. First is the um, SCR 201 task force looking at uh, classification of faculty. Um, uh, no major update this month. The meetings continue. Uh, the hardest issue still continues to be um, um, addressing the directive from the board uh, relating to S or specialist faculty. Uh, the group is actively meeting and uh, we're approaching the final stages of that report and that input from the working group of um, composed of both um, the S and non-instructional faculty and administrators from uh, our units. Uh, that will be the input that comes into the steering committee again, which is um, uh, leadership of both UPA and UH as directed by the board. Uh, when we come in with recommendations for you next month. <clears throat> Those recommendations will include um, policy changes, some of which will be to regents policies, some to executive policies. At this time, we're not quite sure uh, because we're still um, working through this last issue, whether or not we will need changes uh, to the collective bargaining agreement. But the recommendations will be coming from this joint group of uh, UH administration and UPA leadership. Um, so that's uh, <clears throat> where we are. I will say that the conversations, <clears throat> excuse me, with the working group have surfaced um, a, a new idea that appears to be pretty promising, um, looking at a classification, uh, the classification, what we call the I2 uh, faculty who are focused on teaching and whether or not that classification may have an analog to our non-instructional faculty. Uh, what is interesting is the I2 faculty are not tenured. Uh, they are professional instructional faculty within the university. So uh, we're looking at uh, possible lessons from there. Uh, second item uh, to update you on is the strategic plan. Um, we have completed since the last meeting, uh, four town halls. Um, one was, uh, the last one was aimed specifically for students, but uh, many others came, in, including um, a couple of legislators. Uh, we've had uh, over 400 people participating in the town halls, and we also have an online discussion tool that we've been using to gather input from participants. Uh, we are working now to synthesize the feedback and conversations. And I will say, um, pursuant to the input um, that Kahele provided, that um, that area <clears throat> currently referred to as Imperative 3 is an area where we're really um, working to um, embrace the input and figure out a path forward um, that may involve asking for further work to be done uh, as part of the strategic plan. I, I'm not much of a fan of plans that say our plan is to make a plan, but we may find ourselves uh, providing some direction and then um, assembling um, a group to really help us do more to understand what we have to do in this area. Uh, the other areas appear to be riper at this time. And I think, um, you know, it, we'll see, we'll be back next month. It'll be a busy meeting to be sure. Um, Next area is enrollment. Um, if you saw the paper this morning, the front of the Hawaii section uh, had our um, um, uh, media release on that, as well as uh, some comments uh, from a few of us in the administration. I do wanna note um, the data came out, we finished it last week for UH. We did not know that the federal government would release its data yesterday. So I do want to make a correction. We provided a comparison of our enrollment declines to the latest data we had at the time we prepared that release, which was from spring. We, as of this morning, we now have the fall data. Um, nationally, the decrease was not as great this fall. Uh, some of the coverage I heard was uh, we're in a whole and we're not digging as fast as we were. And I think that's a pretty apt description of what it means to have a declining rate of decline. Um, but 
but that's that's kind of the story here um, uh, nationally as well. We have both highlights and lowlights at uh, UH. So let me just start with the lowlight. There's no um, putting lipstick on this one. Our system-wide credit headcount enrollment has declined again. Um, it is a continuing national trend. Um, I have mentioned many times that this metric has many shortcomings. Um, it's only uh, real value is it is the one that is used nationally and it's the one that we have data on going back for many, many decades. So we can use credit headcount enrollment to see how we're doing on enrolling um, credit students, uh, whether they are classified or not. So um, that is what, you know, that data is disappointing. I will say none of us are happy with it. Uh, next month, we will also have our more comprehensive enrollment report. And at that point, we will be shredding it in many different ways to look at credit, non-credit, classified, unclassified. And I think you'll get a more complete picture. Um, it doesn't change this number. Um, so um, with that, I'll just um, make a, a few comments. Um, the press release is out. There's detailed data that we can share with you. And then more to come next month. Um, the smallest headcount decreases were at UH Manoa and Windward Community Colleges, a tenth of a percent. Uh, hardly countable, but it's a decline, so uh, unfortunate. Uh, UH Hilo saw the highest percentage uh, decrease this semester. We saw decreases in transfer students, which is disappointing. Um, and both undergraduate and graduate student declines in, in headcount credit enrollments. So <laughs> let me shift to the highlights because there was also good news in what we found this fall. Um, and one of the first highlight I wanna mention actually contributes to this low light. Um, we had really remarkable improvements in our graduation rates. So for those students who have come to UH and stayed <laughs> with us, um, we've put a lot of focus on trying to get more students through on time and, and national, locally and nationally we use what we call 100% and 150% metrics. 100% means a bachelor's degree in four years, associate degree in two years. 150% means bachelor's degree in six years and associate degree in three years. And that's for first time, full time students. We don't expect that from part time students for, for obvious reasons. Uh, we've won national awards for our work in this area. Our STAR software, which we've talked about, our 15 to finish campaign, uh, have really <laughs> helped us. Um, and these support the hard work, which is really taking place on the campus campuses to keep students in school and on track. This year, seven of our 10 campuses, including all three universities, had the very best on-time graduation rates in our histories um, for our first-time full-time freshmen. So this is looking at the classes of um, 2018 at the universities and 2020 at our community colleges. And this includes these pandemic years. So the fact that we achieved these records during the pandemic um, is really a testament to our students, to our faculty, and to all of the staff who have really helped keep them on track and move them on toward the next steps in their lives. Another highlight was the number of first-time freshmen enrolling. I've reported to you previously my concern. Um, I haven't looked at the breakdown yet as to public school, private school and so forth, but, but over 7,200 new students uh, coming into our campuses this year. Uh, it's a 2.7% increase. Last year was 6.4% increase. So this is a multi-year positive news, even in the pandemic. Um, UH Manoa alone had over 3,100 incoming freshmen, the largest number in history, again, after the largest meeting the previous record last year. Um, <clears throat> we'll give you more information next week, but I can't talk about the community <laughs> colleges and that headcount, the credit headcount enrollment decline without talking about the work that's taking place in short-term workforce training and non-credit programs. Um, something like 11,000 non-credit students in the community colleges who are not included in those official enrollment numbers and over 5,100 of those students uh, are enrolled in uh, workforce programs of 15 or more credits. 
uh, meaning those are beginning to be substantial. That's a full semester of work or a full year part-time. And that's, uh, for example, our apprenticeship programs that are really focused on uh, workforce preparation for those students. Uh, really important. Not everybody needs a degree to do what they uh, want to do and need to do to support themselves and their families. And lastly, let me mention um, an all-time high in our early college enrollment. And we've talked with you before about early college, a 22% increase over last year. So that's 3,500 students. They show up in the data as uh, early admit um, with a couple of other groups, but I'll just emphasize the data both locally and nationally makes it clear that our high school students who are taking college credits while in high school are more likely to enroll in college after they graduate. They're more likely to persist through college and they're more likely to graduate from college and those increases are even greater. The delta associated with early college is even greater for our economically disadvantaged students, our Native Hawaiian students, our Pacific <clears throat> Island students. So it's a really important intervention uh, that shows up in our data in this small way, but will really Im influence in a positive manner uh, what we do for the state moving forward. Just a quick word about our extramural funding. As I report on normally, um, you know, a week ago we were really up like 10%, uh, but today I'll just report that we're up 1.6% from last year. Uh, same day, uh, we're just about 229 million, uh, 300,000, something like that. Um, last year was a record, and if we can keep this up, you know, I, I don't think we expect as big a surge but it would be great to see another um, improvement in our extramural funding. Um, so we post these agendas a week in advance. I will say one of the adventures of my current life is the stadium. Um, I didn't know what I would report, but it's obviously in the news regularly and we thought it was important enough um, to be willing to commit to an update. Uh, the media continue to report on the disagreements between the stadium authority and the governor and members of the administration. Um, as reported, I did attend one meeting uh, of the stadium authority with the governor. Uh, the media did not report. I wasn't showing up in some um, you know, special capacity to be asked to do something or to man to do something. I am a member of the stadium authority by statute. I'm an ex officio non-voting member. So I simply attended the meeting in my capacity as a member of the stadium authority. We are actively monitoring the status of the project. We're in touch with uh, parties who are, you know, clearly all over the map on this thing. Uh, at this time, we have no formal role other than in my capacity as a non-voting ex officio member of the stadium authority. Most meetings uh, are attended on my behalf by athletics director Matlin and have for many years the meeting with the governor I did attend in person. Um, in August, you approved an action to uh, allow us to increase the capacity at Ching Field to at least 1500 seats and relocate the track, which will also give us an opportunity to bring our Wahine soccer team back to camp or to campus for the first time, not back to campus. Um, as uh, you noted at the time in voting for this, and we really appreciated the support, uh, this was and still is the only action that is under our control to provide a uh, venue where we can play football that will allow us to maintain our Division I FBS status. Um, Vice President Govea uh, will continue to report on progress as part of her regular updates to you on major capital projects. Um, at this time, we still expect that the Rainbow Warrior football team will be playing next season on an expanded Ching field with the Jumbotron from Aloha Stadium uh, in front of uh, at least 15,000 fans. Um, so um, we'll keep you posted if anything changes from that. Uh, lastly, um, I wanna comment on um, a couple, uh, these are two pieces of good news. Uh, we have been under two uh, voluntary resolution agreements with the Office of Civil Rights at the uh, Department of Education. The first one uh, relates to Title IX compliance. It actually predates my time as even interim president. 
Uh, this was a complaint in 2013 regarding UH Manoa compliance with Title IX. And it involved some cases that actually went back to 2010. Uh, after some years of discussion, we entered into a voluntary resolution agreement in 2018. This is the technique that they use where we come to agreement on a set of actions we will take. They formally monitor our progress toward those. And if all goes well, eventually they relieve us. And that is exactly what has happened. Um, as a result, we had agreed to review and revise our sexual harassment policies and proce procedures, provide comprehensive staff training and development, conduct a climate survey of undergraduate and graduate students, maintain a centralized record keeping system for our sexual harassment complaints, reports and investigations, interim measures and resolutions of each case. We agreed to provide notice to the complainants and respondents who had been involved in complaints to let them know uh, what had happened and give them the opportunity to request review of what had happened. Um, so this going back to 2013 was a multi-year negotiation to enter into the, the VRA, then a multi-year effort to implement the terms we had agreed to. We were submitting uh, monitoring reports since that time. Um, as of, for example, April 2021, 100% of UH Manoa executives and almost that percentage of faculty had completed Title IX training. That's the kind of thing that we've had to report to them on. Um, so we were delighted that last month they closed out this VRA. We still have to continue compliance. This doesn't mean we are done. It just means we don't have um, them watching us every step of the way. We're back to uh, being responsible on our own. I wanna thank all of the people across the UH Manoa campus who worked on this one, especially um, D. Uono, who was hired during this process as our Title IX coordinator at Manoa, Jen Rose from the Office of Institutional Equity and uh, from uh, the Office of General Counsel, um, uh, Trish Kimura and Liz Contrades, um, all of whom worked really hard with the campus and with uh, the Office of Civil Rights. The second one did take place on my watch fully. This one was about um, web accessibility. Uh, poor uh, Vice President Yoshimi inherited IT infrastructure from the previous Vice President for IT uh, that was not quite in compliance. Um, and this was for the entire UH system. This dates from a 2017 complaint. Uh, claiming that our websites and online programs and activities excluded qualified people with disabilities. Um, there were a lot of these across the country. I should say both of these. Uh, we were not particularly singled out. Um, we were one of many institutions that faced um, OCR investigations in both of these areas. Um, in this one, under the terms of our 2018 uh, VRA, this one we negotiated much more quickly than the other one. We took a number of specific actions to address accessibility of our online presence, including acquisition of software uh, to support the creation and verification that our uh, websites were ADA compliant and our documents online. We had to train people throughout the university on use of that software. And in their closeout letter, also last month, OCR noted that um, based on the results of their testing protocols, combined with the information they gathered during their monitoring of the implementation of the agreement, OCR has determined that the university's actions have resulted in equal opportunities for people with disabilities to participate in the university's online programs and activities and effective communication of those programs and activities. I thought that was an exceptionally strong statement. Normally they don't say anything quite that nice. They simply say, we are releasing you. So that was great. Um, in both of these areas, our work is not done, but I just wanna credit the, the work of um, Mitch Ochi in ITS, uh, also again, Trish Kimura in OGC, and many, many people across all of our campuses who worked on this. In both cases, um, uh, um, uh, uh, Vice Presidents Kerry and Jan uh, were also very involved in helping make sure that um, we, we stayed on track and managed our compliance and our legal affairs. So um, thank you all. This is great news. And as of right now, we are under no VRAs from anyone. Um, we just have to do our jobs.